Okay. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This would be a time for public comment. Um, where's the, uh, where's the camera point? Yeah. The camera's up right here. Point right. Oh, okay. So, okay. Right here's, right here's good. so this is Mr. Olson. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Jason Osterhaus. I work for Emily Good. Yeah, exactly. Just look right towards that, okay. that one right there. Uh, Jason Osterhaus, work for Senator Jerry Moran's office. Just coming up to visit and say hello to our uh, commissioners and uh, don't really have an agenda, just uh, introducing myself. I cover uh, Ashton County for Senator Moran. Okay. Thanks for coming. Nice, uh, to, nice to meet you, sir. Yes, you too. Have we had a chance to review the minutes for the last meeting? I have. I have no additions or corrections. Is that a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to accept. It's seconded by Commissioner Quinn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes through to zero. Commissioner comments and committee reports. Commissioner Quinn. Um, first and foremost, I want to um, let everyone know the prayers for the Smith family in Atchison County has lost a fine young gentleman and it's affecting pretty much all of the county. So. Um, just wanted to say that. Um, and then secondly, uh, goes back to, if you looked at the agenda this morning, the last item was a sales tax interlocal agreement that I put on there. Um, I think it's important for constituents to understand the impact of what getting an interlocal agreement by the end of November could do for Atchison County. Um, there's a lot of noise, a lot of negative history, um, but I just wanna give you a few of the facts so that constituents can talk to their commissioners um, and let their voices be heard because when it comes to this, it's important. And as a commissioner, this is a, a big deal and I just wanna do everything I can to help answer questions and educate um, people. So. Basically, there was a vote in 1993 um, that a sales tax was levied to pay for solid waste and joint communications. Um, as of 2020, that sales tax generated uh, approximately $2,766,387. Um, all the districts in Atchison, District 1 has 5,585 people, District 2 has 5,335 people and District 3 has 5,441 people. Um, in 93, the total vote count was 1,528 votes um, and that was 1,193 said yes and 335 said no. Um, I think it's important to know that when this was pushed through in 93, there was no sunset um, on it and it was also not a dedicated tax. So what that means is it's funneled through at the apportionment rate. I don't know if you guys remember the meeting we had, a joint meeting with all the cities on May 17th, um, but it's funneled through at an apportionment rate based on mill levy and <clears throat> population. So our proposal to the city of Atchison at that meeting um, was, and all the cities for that matter, um, is to go back to the basics, go back to everyone paying their apportionment rate um, for these services. Um, we were given that that's not viable for the, for the city of Atchison from their city uh, manager at the time. And so since then, um, Connie uh, Ellerman, our county treasurer, um, myself, I know Eric's had some meetings and we're just, we're trying to come up with a solution that way this 
some thousand dollars of sales tax, which sales tax is the best money to generate in your county because people from out of county spend money and generate it for us. So therefore we don't have to pick it up in property taxes or fees um, because I think everyone in Atchison County can agree that they're done, they don't want to spend any more um, that direction. So um, just to give you kind of an idea of what it would do if we lose that money, uh, Michelle did an example for us last week and that would increase um, the taxes. Residential, she did that, a residential valuation of approximately 11 mils. She plugged that in and it went from a levy of 55 to a levy of 65, which what that would do to you would be $127.04 per $100,000. Now that's just residential values. That doesn't take into consideration any of that ag land. So, I mean, it's a, it's a huge burden to taxpayers. It's a huge problem. Um, and I know constituents are reaching out to me and voicing their opinion saying, you know, do everything in your power not to lose the sales tax for Atchison County. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to do that. Um, we had a discussion this morning in the workshop and um, I feel like, well, constituent feedback to the commissioners has been different and, and mine um, is not to lose that money because we don't want property taxes to go up or to pay for it in fees. Um, you know, <laughs> on tough subjects like this, you do a lot of reflection as a county commissioner on making sure you're doing what's right, making sure you're representing people in, in a positive manner. And I went back to um, an overview of a commissioner's job that Chairman Bauer had sent me when I put my name in to run for county commissioner last year. And just a few of the key points, they really spoke to me um, when it comes to this topic of, of sales tax and getting an interlocal agreement together with the city of Atchison. And um, some of the things were seek to involve citizens in the decision making process. So that is what I'm going to be doing um, for the next two months to try to accomplish this is I really need citizen involvement. I need everyone to step up and let their voices be heard how, you know, that way, whatever way the chips fall, if our property taxes go up and we lose the sales tax because we can't sit down and, and come up with an agreement, um, that, that doesn't fall on my shoulders. Um, determines appropriate response for county government with other community leaders anticipates needs and barriers to solve and achieving the community's desired future, practices trust building, invests time in building and sustaining community relationships. Focus is on what's best for the whole community and long-term. It practices skills that lead to cooperation rather than competition. Um, thank you, Chairman Bauer, for sending that to me and letting me review back to that because um, this is a huge issue um, and we need to come up with an agreement and work together for the betterment of everyone in Atchison County and any other questions feel free to reach out to me but definitely let your voices be heard if you're in district one and two um, reach out to your commissioners let them know how you're feeling let them know if you want ad valorem taxes to be affected or to do everything in their power to keep this sales tax um, from being either sunset by state le legislation or us just lose it. Um, I don't think anyone is up for looking at another countywide sales tax on the ballot. That's just constituent feedback that I've received. And when you have $2.7 million, um, let's continue to use it and uh, not lose it. So. For sure, no. Um, yes, I, I uh, agree with you on the uh, the sad um, loss that we had in the community. Um, I've been reading up on some maybe opportunities for uh, suicide prevention uh, workshops and things like that. That I think maybe the uh, community health clinic uh, could offer us some things and I, I was wondering if it would might be in the future or some kind of um, meeting or something that we could do about seeing if there's a maybe a uh, 
a bigger need than what is what we know of, and uh, I'd like to look into that. Uh, it, okay, that's the first thing. Uh, then uh, I have three meetings coming up. Uh, NEK Area Agency on Aging is in Hiawatha Thursday morning. Then the Historical Society, Society has their social uh, at 6 o'clock and a meeting at 7 on Monday the 11th. And, uh, oh, tonight is the Extension Service meets here in Atchison at the Presbyterian Church at 6 o'clock. That's all I have. I don't have anything to that. Um, Okay, Maura Chamber, is she on? Yes, she is. Hello. Oh, can you, we see you. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, okay good. good. So thank you to everyone who fit me into the schedule really quickly. I really appreciate that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I asked Kaylee Vanderweed, who is the risk management coordinator for the county, whether, hi, <laughs> whether, um, she would like me to present the risk management award that the county is receiving and she offered this virtual meeting and I accepted. So I just finished processing those applications and even though there wasn't a whole lot of activity um, in the county in 2020, which is what the, the program year is that I was working on, there was enough for me to be able to reimburse 1.34% of the county's 2020 contribution to KCAMP. So that amount is just over $2,200. It's $2,204.62. So I actually already mailed the check. It went out this morning, but I thought I would present it and let you guys know that I think it's awesome that you have practices in place that are helping to reduce your losses, your, you know, your property losses and your liability claims. Do you guys have any questions? Well, I like a pat on the back of $2,200. Yeah. <laughs> Where does the $2,200 go through? Um, most generally, that goes to the safety committee because the safety committee is the one who, um, they have the quarterly meetings, they have different um, things quarterly as far as like the fire drills and that kind of stuff. And Mara, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, they they have restrictions or requirements that are have to be met in order to receive this money back. Yes, actually, there's quite a, a long list of criteria for the award, and it's actually in two different levels. Um, so I can tell you, you know, the first level is the, it's called the Risk Management Achievement Award, and that is uh, what Atchison County is receiving. Um, so there's a designated risk management coordinator. You have a risk management committee comprised of key departments. Um, you have at least quarterly risk management meetings attended by representatives of all those key departments. Um, you do annual inspections of your facilities. And if anything you know, is, comes up as a recommendation, you show, you document that you've addressed those recommendations. Um, you have an employee handbook or employee policies that have been updated within the last five years. Um, completion of KCAMP online U training is another uh, criteria. It's training by at least 10 employees each quarter. Uh, defensive driving training for all employees within the previous three years and backup power and alarms for vaccine storage. So those are the eight criteria under this program, under the Risk Management Achievement Award section. Okay, good. So all this money goes to help further our results of being a safe. In reducing losses within the county. So it's a great right. way. We are back. So yeah, I'm sorry for. Got any questions or comments? No, I'm on the safety committee and I know that uh, they have always up for suggestions on on what we can do to improve and, and to use the criteria that's set forth by uh, KCAMP. And, and use that for templates on what to look for, uh, inspect or review. And uh, it's, a, it's a great way, it's, it's, it's a two-way street. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting points for being 
safer and things are being reviewed timely and we're, we're utilizing all of that plus we get a great little perk on the to, to go through it and do that so much appreciated thank you very much thank you thank you and thanks for your time we have we have a couple of things of oh, i don't we're finished if you uh right, okay thanks very so, much okay so we have a couple of things we need to it on the 18th i believe of october it's the kansas Associated county annual meeting that's where a lot of business is done uh and a lot of our county department heads and elected officials will be attending for both continuing education, uh, some collaboration with other people within their same positions. And that's coming up. So there's a couple things we need to take care of. First of all, uh, the chair would entertain a motion to appoint Michelle Phillips. The chair would entertain a motion to let the county, the chairman sign uh, Michelle Phillips, Action County Clerk, as a delegate for K Camp, and Jody Moore, HR Director, as the alternate. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved by Commissioner. Clinton. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Noel. All in favor, signify and say no. aye. Aye. Passes three to zero. Okay, then um, the Kansas Association of Counties comes up with a legislative agenda that they uh, use for the 2022. Um, agenda and uh, for, the, for the 2022 legislature. The chair would entertain a motion to direct uh, Michelle Phillips, our delegate, to vote for the approval of the Kansas Associated County uh, agenda. Let's let, let's leave the agenda. Also so moved. moved. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I just want to say something maybe for the camera for the people at home that the legislative agenda then is there's one vote per county so we have this vote translates for Michelle to go to the KAC and and further our agenda so it, it's an approval of, of their agenda and pass through so these are things that, uh, that affect counties one standing out is that the, one of their legislative agendas is to get the legislature to a, a constitutional amendment to create home rule to counties. A lot of people don't realize this, but in 1952, a constitutional amendment was placed on the ballot to um, allow municipalities to have home rule, but counties weren't included. Since then, the legislature, by legislative action, has given home rule to counties. The counties seek it constitutional and uh because it's something we have can be taken away and we really believe it that's just one of the things that's on the agenda there's like 50 items on the agenda that all are about county uh, county governments and county residents okay that's a lot of old and finished un or unfinished business before the board Don't hear it. Have any? Pat Henderson, are you on? You want to give us an update? Yes, I'm on. I have a couple of things. Um, first of all, the uh, the tax sale proceeding. There is a requirement in the statute that the Board of County Commissioners direct that, and so there's a proposed resolution. I think that's in your packet, authorizing the commencement of a tax sale pr uh, procedure. Um, the plan is for us to file that a week from today. Uh, we originally had planned to file it today, but we noticed some slight discrepancies in amounts. I think maybe having to do with uh, interest calculations between what figures um, I obtained from our computer system and what the treasurer's office had. So uh, we're trying to get those straightened out. We will have it straightened out and intend to file it on Tuesday of next week, the 12th. Have we pass this today, Pat? Yes, the resolution needs to be adopted before the case is filed. Okay. So the chair would entertain a motion to approve resolution 21, 2021-1488 
a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Atchison County, Kansas, concerning judicial foreclosures and sale of real estate liens. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Quinn. Second. Seconded by uh, Commissioner Noel. Michelle, you'll have to print a copy for us to sign. Yes. Okay, any need for an executive session today? Um, well, hold on. I still have one more. Okay, I'm sorry, Patrick. Yeah, we, we had published um, notice of a public hearing for today for the uh, neighborhood revitalization program, uh, the extension of, of that. And there's been a, a plan that's on file um, and we are having a series of the public hearings on the, uh, uh, on the plan. So um, I don't see that there's anyone that uh, has appeared pursuant to the, uh, the published notice of the hearing. Uh, so I'd ask that you confirm that. And then um, after that, um, there's an interlocal agreement. And uh, I would ask your consideration of that interlocal agreement. And that interlocal agreement adopts the neighborhood revitalization plan for uh, for the county, there are several other municipalities that are um, that are also part of the this new plan. So, I should open the public hearing, Patrick. Yes, sir. Okay. So I open the public hearing on the neighborhood revitalization plan. Uh, and that, Pat, I'd like you to explain every, to everybody what this plan is and how it affects us as a community. Well, the uh, Neighborhood Revitalization Act, uh, the Kansas Neighborhood Revitalization Act was adopted by the legislature several years ago. This is the eighth term under that act for Atchison County. And the, the seventh term, which is the current term ends October 31st. And Neighborhood Revitalization Plan promotes rehabilitation uh, and construction and development throughout the entire county uh, by offering an incentive in the form of a tax rebate. And the incentive is a rebate based upon the what, what's known as the increment or the incremental increase in property taxes that are attributable to the plan. Um, so that is if someone does a project that improves the value of real estate, the, uh, the increase in value, or at least the tax attributable to the increase in value will be rebated from the various taxing entities that are part of the plan. And that is Atchison County, um, five townships within Atchison County, Benton, Center, Grasshopper, Capioma, and Walnut. Uh, four of the cities, that is the city of Atchison, the city of Effingham, city of Huron, the city of Muscoda, and two school districts, USD 377 and USD 409. And so the, the increase in the tax bill from the tax levy from any of those, any of those entities would be rebated according to, uh, there's a couple of different formulas or schedules. There's uh, sort of the the, the generic schedule, and then there's a more robust plan for uh, for target areas. And target areas that are included include uh, um, a portion of the city of Atchison. Uh, they include the, uh, the city of Huron, and they include um, a township, a Grasshopper Township. Um, and so in those projects within those neighborhoods would have a little bit uh, more vigorous um, or a longer lasting um, rebate program. So 
Uh, the actual program is 40 pages long. It's uh, the treasurer has copies. The each of the municipalities have copies. I believe it's available on the website as well. Uh, it probably it lays it out in a lot more detail than I could do in this summary. I'd like to add one thing to that, and that is, if you're interested in this program, please get go to the uh, courthouse and sign up for it before you break ground, because that has been something that people want to uh, participate in it, but they get in a hurry, they break ground, and they're, uh, according to the, the bylaws or the, the resolution there, you must uh, do your application process first. And another thing is you don't need to apply if you're in multiple jurisdictions. One application gets you, you could be in Benton Township in the city of Effingham and in 377, all of those that are participating, but it's just a one sign up will get you to, to all of those. So it's it's very simple. And uh, I've been working a little bit with Pat and, and uh, had a lot of questions on this. So uh, anybody that's has an intention to to do it please check with the courthouse first i misspoke, I misspoke a little bit ago it's benton township that is the target area uh, and both usd 377 and 409 um, under the plan participate in the target area if the overlapping taxing jurisdiction also participates uh, or is within a target area so uh, for example, if uh, a project in Benton Township would have the target area uh, rebates from Atchison County, from Benton Township, and from uh, USD 377. Okay. Anybody else want to speak at the public hearing? Seeing none, I close the public hearing at 127. Um, do we have to pass the resolution ourselves, Pat? There is an interlocal agreement, which is how it's adopted. And uh, right here. yes, I'd ask you to consider it and uh, adopt it. Okay. The chair would entertain a motion to adopt an interlocal agreement, participate in the neighborhood revitalization plan. So moved. moved by Commissioner second. Noel, second by Commissioner Quinn. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I just want to say thank you to Mr. Henderson and Eric for you guys took the reins and had all the meetings and educated everyone on it. That's why it's a benefit to the county. So thank you guys. Okay. I think Pat's had a lot of help with uh, the different offices in the courthouse and more so than me. So I yeah. want to uh, acknowledge their help too. Yeah, well, everybody, everybody with, uh, that helped, thank you. He coordinated with four cities, uh, the county, and then five uh, townships. So uh, now, I should probably add the city of Atchison had their public meeting, public hearing yesterday, and they did adopt the uh, interlocal agreement by a vote of five to zero. Great. Okay, executive session, we don't have any today. Presentation, okay, so public comment. I have another time for public comment. Does anybody want to make a public comment? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn at 1.28 p.m. So moved. Second. It's moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so we need to sign the sales tax resolution. Resolution for the sales tax, I have okay. And it's just your signature. Just my signature. Yes.